security officer that uh, exam includes two papers and the second paper is what I am uh, generally trying to talk to you and second paper again is of 150 marks and uh, it uh, is divided into five different units and uh, your yeah, syllabus is in such a way that if you have knowledge if you can gain knowledge of all the five different uh, different units the different parts of your paper definitely when you secure a job you can easily go through your uh, activities uh, because your syllabus is uh, scheduled or moduled in such a way and uh, basically coming into your syllabus coming into the syllabus which you are supposed to study when you write your exam entrance exam now first unit first unit is it is food chemistry remember now chemistry when we talk about food chemistry or chemistry itself is the chemical composition deals with the chemical composition and what do you what, what might be the chemical composition of food remember there are only three not more than three any food any type of food which you take into consideration are differentiated as proteins carbohydrates and lipids this is the basic chemical composition of food a food is either rich in protein either rich in carbohydrate or lipid nothing more than that when I say that it necessarily doesn't mean that food only contains protein it contains other components also but protein is in a higher concentration now the same same thing can be applied to carbohydrates and also to lipids and uh, these three are the basic structures now this is the chemical composition of food and coming to the definition of food now why what what actually is food this is the basic term which we generally apply when we talk of uh, uh, usage of language we say to our colleagues that I am going to have food I am going to have tea I have cup of tea now this food remember is any substance is any substance it may be a liquid or solid it may be liquid or solid the thing is the only thing is it should be acted upon by your enzymes to result energy it should yield energy when you take it unless it yields energy you cannot call it as a food food at the end of the time at the end of the day definitely is broken down into simpler components resulting in energy and energy is what we generally require unless we have energy we cannot do our work and uh, this energy happens only due, due to metabolism that is what I talk of breakdown of complex things into simpler ones once food is taken it is subjected to metabolism metabolism happens due to different enzymes present in your body and that is the reason for its breakdown and its breakdown results in yielding energy and that energy is required for our survival that is the basic thing now and any type of it may any type of substance it might be rich in carbohydrate it might be rich in protein it might be rich in lipid cannot be considered as food unless it cannot be digested by the enzymes best example we can give I have already uh, talked about this uh, food the best example we can give is cellulose cellulose is a polysaccharide basic composition of your newspaper or any paper it is rich in polysaccharide even though it is a polysaccharide definitely it cannot be taken as food the reason is we don't have enzymes which can break down this cellulose to energy so that cannot be considered even though it is a polysaccharide it cannot be considered as a food food should yield energy then only it is considered to be a food this is what we study in first unit the chemical composition chemical composition of protein now we are calling certain things as proteins we are calling certain things as carbohydrates and some other things as lipids because they are different in their chemical composition when they are different in their chemical composition naturally their function also will be different when their function is different their usage also will be different you require proteins for some other thing you require carbohydrates for something you require lipids for some other thing you don't only take carbohydrates you don't only take lipids you don't only take proteins now the mixture of all these things in equal proportion is what you call it as balanced diet diet and balanced diet diet is a composition of all the requirements 
which is taken as a food it contains proteins it contains lipids it contains now basic important thing is you can mention or classify it as micronutrients and macronutrients now which are required in high concentrations nutrients which are required by your body in larger quantities are generally called macronutrients and those which are consumed which are taken which are required by oneself in very less quantities are generally called micronutrients and your diet is a mixture of both micronutrients and also my macronutrients and balanced diet is equal proportions of all the requirements if you have um, all the re all the requirements in exactly equal proportions then you call it balanced diet what the food we cook is not balanced diet remember it is only diet right balanced diet is a chemical preparation now for example you take a, uh, uh, what do you call a, what what we add into your milk right the, your horlicks bone vita they can be considered as balanced diet because everything is added in equal proportions and that you don't observe in the rice what you cook at your home in the curry what you cook at your home that is generally diet it, it contains no doubt it contains all micro and macronutrients but not in equal proportions and that is the basic difference between diet and balanced diet and in food chemistry we'll talk about the structure of proteins we'll talk about structure of carbohydrates we'll talk about structure of lipids and the structure of lipids after after structure we even talk about its function and its usage and it's also its nutritive value well, how rich how well, what is the content of protein which is required by your body and remember one more point to be remembered here uh, this uh, requirement differs upon the occupation of an individual one thing upon the activity of an individual one thing the best example is when you talk of an athlete who runs 100 meters now he he has a different uh, balanced diet remember he used to be given a different balanced diet and the person who goes to uh, the normal uh, job sit in a ac room does his work on a computer he requires a different type of new uh, different type of diet it, de it depends on the occupation of an individual it depends upon uh, the activities which you perform and these are some things which uh, define or you can say which differ when you are talking of uh, the type of diet you take activity and also occupation and this is what we'll study in unit one it is the chemical composition and its functions its usage is what we study in food chemistry the second unit is the second unit what we are going through will be food microbiology and as a by definition i think we have defined food when we want to define microbiology microbiology is the study of microorganisms study of microorganisms is the basic definition whatever class we are in the definition is given that way but what do you study about a microorganism but what do you study about a microorganism now study we study its morphology, physiology, biochemistry. These are the three important things which we are supposed to know about a microorganism related to food industry. And why only these three? There are more than more than these three subheadings or more than more than these three factors what we can study about a microorganism we can study its genetic material which we call it as molecular studies right all this can be studied molecular studies are not that much related to food microbiology they may be related when we are talking of may be related they may be related in detection of the type of microbial contaminant in food that when we go into deeper sense of food microbiology when we study about this unit separately definitely we can uh, i can explain you what uh, are the aspects but for the time you suppose that you remember that we will basically study the morphology of bacteria we will study about the physiology of my bacteria we study about the biochemistry of bacteria and morphology what is morphology morphology is the external shape what is, is that is what we study about bacteria how they are arranged the shape and arrangement is what we study in morphology physiology what is there in a microorganism is it possessing a capsule is it possessing a flagella is it uh, possessing a, what you call slime all these things we study about is its physiology and uh, talking of the biochemistry part these microorganisms are very different in their activities unlike 
human beings whatever we take it results in the formation of glucose glucose to energy glucose undergoes glycolysis and glycolysis yields in energy but talking of uh, microorganisms they are different in their nutritive aspect they are different in their existence some exist at very high temperatures some other exist at very low temperatures some uh, some microorganisms exist uh, in very uh, uh, sorry in alkaline conditions some survive under acidic conditions all these factors that is what we talk about microbial diversity diversity is maximum among, among microorganisms that is the reason why when they are that much diverse their biochemistry their activities are also variant they show various activities some can digest uh, what do you call starch some other can digest cellulose some other can digest uh, you know, some other complex polysaccharides which even human beings cannot do and such things such activities is studied in the biochemistry part of a microorganisms basically this in food in food microbiology we study about the activities useful activities of microorganisms include useful activities and also harmful activities useful activities and harmful activities useful activities include we literally knowingly add a microorganism into food in order to because when we add a microorganism into food by the activity of that particular microorganism this food undergoes a particular change which is desired by human beings that is what useful activities are best example milk to curd we we add starter culture to milk the previous day and uh, this starter culture what we are talking of uh, th this this is nothing but a <coughs> cluster of bacterial cells. It is nothing but a cluster of bacterial cells. These are inoculated into that food. Food is nutritive in nature. They grow there. They show their activity, convert milk to a solid state, which we call it curd or yogurt. Right. That is one aspect, useful aspect. Only one. One is what I am talking of. There are many useful aspects. When we go into details of the topic, we will study that and harmful these microorganisms do spoil your food spoil sp when i say spoil we can define spoilage spoilage is a term which can be defined as undesirable change brought in a food undesirable change and when we are talking of undesirable change it may be physical structure or chemical nature this food both undergoes physical changes and also chemical changes this undesirable change in physical structure or chemical nature of a food is what is called as spoilage. These definitely are involved in spoilage and that we study in harmful aspects of uh, uh, activities of microorganisms in food. Coming to unit 3, unit 3 is food processing technology. This is uh, becoming more important these days because uh, Due to lack of time, the only reason we have only 24 hours per day and uh, we cannot, uh, what do you call, go on cooking our food previously. Um, we previously or even uh, in this part of the world, now food is regularly cooked. And when, when, when we go to Western countries, Western countries, they find very less time for cooking. And uh, the reason being, they, they, they think that the time they spend for cooking is uh, no, not that much necessary because at the same time when they can spend in earning, going to their job, doing their work, definitely they can, uh, what do you call, earn more. That is the reason why the food is supposed to be stored for longer period. And all the technology, all the processing, all the processes which are involved in storing a food is what we generally study in food processing technology. Processing is nothing but uh, what do you call making a what do you call uh, different uh, uh, application of different technology into a food in order to increase its shelf life shelf life as you all know shelf life is a period for which time uh, for which a food can be stored without taking specific precautions and all the techniques all the techniques uh, uh, can be, all the techniques are employed only due to one reason they are employed only to increase the shelf life of a food only to preserve food for a longer duration of time and all this thing is what we study in unit 3 and unit 4 food laws and organizations and what is a law law is a rule simply we can put it that way it is a rule and there are certain rules for which uh, uh, which are employed in order to maintain 
standards of a food and I think uh, when we come across food laws the most important thing is what we commonly observe on each and every food we eat this is the logo which we observe FSSAI on your uh, um, chocolate paper or on your uh, what you call uh, uh, beverage cool drink anything it is food safety standards authority of India this is an organization and uh, this governs the quality of a food. This is regularly, this organization is one which maintains, which gives the standard of a food. When a food does, is not containing this particular logo, you can think that it is not authorized by this Food Safety Standards Authority to be sold in a country. Definitely when you are consuming, it may be a chocolate worth 50 paise or anything worth uh, 500 rupees or 5000 rupees definitely it should contain if it is a sealed one remember if it is a sealed one it should definitely contain FSSAI food safety standards authority of India it means that an organization is involved in maintaining that particular standards food laws now this laws are to be maintained because when they are sold out sold in public naturally we cannot know when that food is prepared when that food is cooked and that is the reason why now there are certain organizations which are livid or you can say which which uh, make sure that uh, there, there are definitely some laws are maintained in uh, what you call manufacturing of a food or they are maintained in selling because we do have an expiry date we find that best before so and so date or they, that law says that the food is safe only due only for that period of time so there are laws and uh, there are organizations, organizations make sure that the, these laws are followed. Now why these laws are to be followed because they, um, the safety has to be maintained as they are sold into public and as we are consuming, we should not fall sick, we should not un, uh, what you call uh, undergo illness. That is the reason why specific laws are levied and organizations make sure that these laws are followed. And last unit is public occupational hygiene public and occupational hygiene and nutrition now here it is divided as public and occupational public are we the common people now we are also involved now when we go to uh, any roadside uh, uh, what do you call shops we find different types of food sold there now they are considered to be public and occupational when you talk of uh, food manufacturers in industries say a Britannia biscuit industry say a bread industry definitely by occupation they manufacture that food and they what you call seal it and definitely hygiene is uh, the neatness and neatness is to be maintained and at the same time food should be nutritious nutritious in the sense it should contain all the micronutrients and also macronutrients in a food make sure that the food is containing nutrients and it is also hygiene neatness in the sense basically it is free of microorganisms particularly I am talking about microorganisms because these are the things which are responsible for spoilage of a food so it should be rich in nutrition it should be hygienic and the public who are using that you are involved in preparation public and also occupational individuals should maintain a hygiene and at the same time nutrition is also to be maintained in a food and how are all these factors maintained or retained within a food is what we study in this last unit food and occupational hygiene and nutrition